The PSE index gained four tenths of one percent, closing at 73.43 yesterday at the start of this brand new shortened trading week, despite net foreign selling of nearly 50 million. For more on her market game plan, we want to bring in Sandra Aralio, Chief Investment Officer, ATR Asset Management. Hi, Sandra. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking our call. Good morning. Good morning, Mimi. All right. Um, so I want to start with the earnings season. Um, so far, so good. Is that what we say about the earnings season at this point? I mean, it's not just about third quarter. It's also about what happens or the outlook for the holiday season and for 2025. So what's happening beneath the surface here? Yeah, so definitely um, earning season so far has not disappointed. We are very much on track with our uh, mid-teens uh, EPS growth targets for this year. Um, the banks continue to, to show strong results. As, as you know, Mimi, um, loan growth has been accelerating in uh, 3, 3Q. And then ROEs no, or return on equity for the banks also <clears throat> have been inching up. Um, retailers have also started reporting and, you know, uh, we see some challenges on the consumer discretionary side, uh, particularly for formats like department stores, uh, specialty retail and home improvement. But on the consumer staples, there there is resilience. Um, going into next year, definitely we are seeing uh, consumer discretionary property and holding companies leading leading the way. They've kind of lagged this year, but it's, it's also a function of uh, inflation coming down and um, the rate cuts that the BSP have implemented in August. So we see that effect coming uh, full on to next year. All right. Um, so you're sounding pretty bullish if, if you... Think about what you just said, uh, easing inflation, rates have started to come down since mm -hmm. August. So are you seeing more upside to the market or you think there's more downside? Um, you know, at this point, um, there are some risks on the horizon, particularly election risk in the U.S. in the next you know, couple of weeks or week. Um, we do think that uh, it's even no very even upside to downside in the short term at this point but as you pointed out it's really about positioning for for next year and um we do think that we uh, companies are still poised for uh, low teens growth and earnings valuations are really undemanding still so more bullish i would say uh, over the medium to longer term Okay, um, I just wanted to bring you the opening numbers. We're about seven minutes into trade for the day, and the index is down by about a third of 1%, 22.7321. The broader all shares is down um, twice as much, down by about three quarters of 1%. Um, all sub indices are now trading in the red, led by losses in the services sector and the property. Um, so, what's the range that you're seeing for the PSE index? Maybe in the next two you know, to three months. Um, yeah, we do need to break around um, seven, seven six, I would say. Uh, so to to clear that uh, technical resistance level. But again, that said, um, the the liquidity environment is is very constructive, and I'm, it's not just local, no. Uh, even uh, in the context of. Uh, global global investing global inve um, uh, foreign investors um, flows from developed markets the u.s has be, it's been a u.s led um, or or mm -hmm. uh, very u.s centric uh, bull market so far and it's yet to um, really be sustained by other uh, developing uh, markets and uh, philippines is is one of those beneficiaries to be think to that uh, continued um, uh, investing environment. Mm -hmm. Is the peso giving you a headache? <laughs> <laughs> Is the peso giving us a headache? Not really. I mean, there's seasonality involved, uh, definitely. Um, we do think that uh, a lot of, of the... Generally, we do think that um, the, the dollar is set to broadly weekend considering the um the the easing cycle that the fed is uh has has started on uh it's less of a um headache for the bsp 
to to kind of uh, watch out for peso weakness. But uh, as a consumer, uh, definitely um, it's not it's not really a big uh, uh, problem for us right now. Mm -hmm. um, well, the peso actually opened flat, 58.2 against the U.S. dollar from yesterday's close of 58.225. Um, it's pretty quiet on the disclosures front. Um, we reported earlier Metro Bank record earnings for the first nine months. Concepcion Industrial also reporting pretty strong earnings thanks to um, thanks to personal consumption, the consumer side that helped offset the commercial side's weakness. Um, I think we're now ready for your blind item, Sa Sandra. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have for us, uh, and why do you like this stock? So, as I mentioned, no, we do think that um, it's really uh, discretionary that that may lead the way going into next year, especially since they've lagged. Um, this particular stock we like because, first, it's a consumer discretionary stock that targets really um, mass the mass consumer. It offers value for money, and it's we've seen resilience even though um, uh, consumer spending has been weak in the past year. Um, it, it has a couple of international businesses, so that's another clue. <laughs> uh, we think that they are poised to turn, turn it around. Um, the latest overseas acquisition being a Korean uh, value coffee chain. No? So again, it, it piggybacks on the... Um, overall buoyant uh, investing environment uh, globally um, and maybe lastly uh, we do see some uh, very in the very near term term some tailwinds from holiday spending and also the uh, upcoming midterm elections so our price target really has still a 30 percent upside for this stock 30%. so i don't know if that's enough clues <laughs> but uh consumer Sandra, you actually gave it away with a coffee chain, the Korean <laughs> coffee chain. But, well, we well our viewers do tweet us, so let's see whether most of them got this. Thank you so much, Sandra, for joining us and for the insights. We'll see you soon, and, and have a great uh, Undus break coming up, all right? Keep safe. Thank you. All right.